Hey everybody, today Rado runs through the Dwarves. Or as you can see right here, also known as the Die Zwerge, which is German for the Dwarves. Now this is a hugely popular fantasy role-playing cooperative adventure game that's been out in Germany, in German, for a few years now. I mean, you can see it's actually won several awards. It's very well beloved. And in fact, it's based off a phenomenally successful series of fantasy novels of the same name, The Dwarves, all about this fantasy dwarven kingdom and all the problems it has to go through. Now, for years and years, people have been wanting a, an English version of this game because it has a lot of text in it and nobody wanted to bother with trying to learn German to play the game. And so finally, Pegasus Spiele, the publisher, is putting out an English version. They are actually running a Kickstarter campaign right now to get the English version of the game made. And so that's why I'm doing a run through today so you can decide whether it might be something you would want to back. So. What's going on in Dietzverga or the Dwarves? Well, the Dwarvish Kingdom is under assault from all kinds of baddies. The trolls and the, the orcs and the, the elves, although I assume they're very evil, nasty elves. And uh, every player takes on the role of one brave Dwarvish defender of the land. Each one has different stats and abilities and whatnot. In this game, I'm going to be Bavrigor Hammerfist who uh, you know, is not really that great at fighting, because he's always uh, got a tankard of beer in his hand. You can see here, here's my actual little miniature. These little minis, they're awesome. They're lovely, cute, adorable little dwarves here. You can actually even see he's got his little eye patch on there. So, uh, I'm a Bavrigor, and my special power, I'm not very good at fighting, I'm pretty good at crafting, and I'm not the fastest dwarf around, but heck, I'm a dwarf, so what do you expect? And my special ability is I can move through parish lands without suffering the consequences like all my dwarven brethren. Jen, uh, second player, she will be playing uh, uh, Balandus Steelfinger, who is a smith of the clan Firstlings, the Firstlings clan. And she's actually a better fighter than me. Although she's not quite as good, I, I get to roll four dice when I'm crafting. She only gets to roll three. She's also a slowpoke like me. Her special power is, though, whenever she tries to do a craft test specifically, she's actually a better... You know, this hand is kind of a general all-around, what can you do that's not fighting related? So I'm, pretty, I'm a pretty handy guy, but Jen, she only gets to roll three dice, but she gets to re-roll dice if she's doing crafting specifically. So not only is she a better fighter than me, she's a better uh, crafter, but she only has three hit points, whereas I've got four. So you can see, you know, there's, and there's uh, three other dwarves. And there's actually a stretch goal, I believe, on the Kickstarter campaign to unlock uh, another dwarf. So you can have five or six dwarves to choose from, which give you different abilities and focuses and all that every time. Now, we start out in our own little hometowns, and at the beginning of the game, no bad guys have shown up, but as part of setup, there is one core quest we have to complete, and then three adventures which are also going on. What we're trying to do is we are trying to make it through this deck of adventures. We got to get them all completed before time runs out. And time is being tracked on this this track up here. We're over here. This is a little marker representing our progress, and this is a marker representing the progress of the forces of evil. And so over the course of the game, this is going to be moving and cutting off how much time we've got. We're going to be running out of time every time we take a turn. And if these two markers ever meet up, we've run out of time and we lose. Also, if any character ever dies, we lose. On the flip side, we win if we can make it through this deck of adventures. And um, <clears throat> the game actually has a couple different ways you can adjust difficulty. One of them is, <clears throat> if you want to have an easier game, you can remove two, three, or four adventures from the top of the deck. So, you, so basically, you have fewer adventures you have to do in the same amount of time. I, I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to remove three to make things a little bit easier for us. So I'm just going to take the top three off the deck. Now, you could have take up to four if you want to play on easy. But there is another way that you can increase the difficulty as well, which the rules suggest only to do if you're an expert player. And what the heck, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to turn on, even though I'm making the game a little bit easier for myself by taking some of the quests out, I'm going to make the game more tough for myself by implementing the expert variant, which means the bad guys are going to be able to spread through the land much quicker than normal. And I'll demonstrate how that goes in a minute, right after I cough. <coughs> <coughs> Ah, sorry about that. Okay, <laughs> hopefully I got all that phlegm out of the way. So let's get going with Die Zwerge. Okay, so I'll be the first player, and on a player's turn, there's three steps you have to go through, and you can see my German board hasn't been translated here yet. First, we Heldenmarker uh, Weiderzien. 
Heldermarker Weiderzine, which means we basically, oops, we should start here. We start on these speeds. We move forward on the progress track and we do whatever the track says. So here we were at the beginning. So I'm going to move up because I'm taking my first turn. And what this means is bad guys are going to spawn in area five. And so we're going to have to spawn. And you can see when, uh, Jen's turn, it's going to move forward again and more bad guys are going to spawn in area five. And then on my turn, we're going to have to add some bad event decks into the adventure deck. And then bad guys will spawn at area one and then area five and then area four. And so you can see the game is actually it's this track is really quite neat because you can plan and you can see in advance what type of stuff is coming for you as you know time continues to pass over the course of the game. But anyway, so I'm going to go and so we have to now spawn some bad guys. How does that work? Well, we've got these three bad guy dice, one for the elves, one for the orcs, and one for the trolls. And the dice all have two or three blank spaces on them and then some ones and some twos. And we're going to roll them all and see how many bad guys are going to show up in area five. And, all right, that's not a bad roll. Um, the purple, yeah, the, uh, there's no, no orcs and no elves, but there are two trolls. And that's actually the most it could have been. It could have been one troll, but it would actually turn out to be two trolls. So, we take the two trolls and we put them over here in Area 5. Or the uh, Drakenbrodem, or Bro Drakenbrodem, which I think is actually going to say the Dragon Flame. This is kind of like Mount Doom, where these two trolls have come in. Now, I should say, by the way, one thing, you know, the base game... All the bad guys have always been represented by cubes. But it, with the new expansion, which again, you can go check out on the Kickstarter campaign, there is, or basically you can get the base game, like what I'm showing you today, but you can also get an expansion kind of component upgrade that replaces these cubes with really cool little wooden monster meeples, so, which, which look really, really awesome. But again, you can check it out on the Kickstarter campaign. But anyway, so first thing at the beginning of my turn, I moved forward and that spawned two trolls over here in Area 5. Next up, new card, uh, Neue Karten auf Decken, which is to say, if we did not have three, oh, what are these called? Uh, what are they called? Adventure cards? Scenario cards? I, I should probably call them the right thing since I'm going to be saying this a lot throughout the game. Where are they? Um, <clears throat> all right. So we have one scenario card. We have to finish all the scenarios and we have three adventure cards. If on uh, the previous turn any of these had been removed and completed, I would add new ones now. So there's always three adventures in one scenario on the go. But as it is, I've already done that as part of setup. And so, you know, these give us goals. Remember, we are trying to get all these scenarios finished as fast as possible. And the first scenario we have in the game is Gear Up. This quest is completed when all players together have at least three equipment cards. So, that means we've got a goal. We're trying to get equipment drawn from this deck as fast as possible. Let's see. And now there are two ways to get equipment. One is by completing certain adventures. Let's see. In fact, actually, yeah, deciphering the ancient runes. If we actually complete this, we will get two adventure cards and we'll be two-thirds of the way there. So we probably want to finish this adventure and decipher the ancient runes ASAP so we can start working on this scenario. Now, there's one other way we can get equipment is... Um, at this point, not only is the Dwarven Kingdom under assault from all these forces of evil, but there, there's trouble within. There, there, the two great Dwarven leaders, I guess, uh, 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 Balin Dillon, or what was it? Uh, Balin Dillon and Bislipper are vying for control of the Dwarven Council. And at the beginning of the game, you can see this little Dwarven Council marker is right here in the middle. Apparently, uh, Balin Dillon is the good guy because if we can move this over further to the right, we unlock special abilities, and I've got these stickers on here that put these abilities in English, that will help us over the course of the campaign. If, however, um, Bislipper you know, gets into power, it's basically we're falling, and we have all these extra problems, like um, you know, potentially losing hit points and having to re-roll dice when we thought we succe succeeded, we might fail, and stuff like that. So, if we can get, what's it, uh, uh, a Balin Dillon, all the way over here to the top level, we can actually start crafting our own items. So, really, to be able to get this done, I want to do the Ancient Runes. I probably also want to get the Council as fast as I can all the way over here to the right, because then we can make our own stuff. The other th two adventures, Crush the Trolls, and what are Dwarven women like? They don't give us equipment. This one just prevents the Trolls from spawning for a while, and this one, choose one player to gain two. So this one actually gives us some healing if we're getting in trouble. So. Let's see, what am I going to do? Now, um, well, anyway though, the, the, so the first thing, I moved up and do whatever the track says, then new cards come out, which they're out now, and now finally, 
I get to do two actions on my turn. And the actions I can do, I can do the same one twice. You can move around the world. You can fight bad guys if you're in the same area as them. You can attempt to do, to complete adventures when they ask for it, like to do the one I really care about, Siphoning Ancient Runes. I have to travel to Backsa Black Saddle, you know, the capital of the Dwarven Kingdom, and complete two craft tests at a five or better. So I have to roll fives and sixes in a single turn. So that isn't easy. Although, actually, it's not too bad because I, when, I attempt, when I attempt crafting, I get to roll four dice. But Jen's even better. She gets to roll three dice, but she can re-roll if she fails. So functionally, she gets to roll six dice. <clears throat> so that's interesting. But for us to attempt this, we have to travel to the capital. So, the other quest we've got right now, the other adventures, is in a single battle, if you can defeat two trolls, then the next round, the trolls won't spawn at all. And what are Dwarven women like? Roll as many number dice as you have health points and, um, and heal. See, we're not hurt, so we don't want to do that. So, what do I want to start out right now doing? Do I want to head over to Black Saddle and decipher the runes? Or do I want to head way up north and fight these trolls? Because, the long, because if I can beat both of these trolls, I'll complete the Crush the Trolls quest. And the nice thing about that is, if I complete this and get it out of the way, I get to draw another one. And this one might be a good, another good opportunity to get equipment because we're trying to get equipment as fast as possible. <clears throat> oh, but I'm sorry. So, on my turn, I get two actions. I can move around, I can fight bad guys, I can attempt to complete quests, and the fourth thing I can do is, I can send messages to the council, which means I can basically attempt to try and push the council track to the right. Let's see, I think, you know, I feel like I got, I got a pretty good shot at this. So I think the first of my two actions is, I'm just going to try to move, um, I'm going to try and move up here to get to Black Saddle so I can try to complete Deciphering Ancient Runes. Now, if you want to move, what you do is, you look at your speed. My speed is 2, that's not very good. But 2 means I get to roll 2 dice. And these are just, you know, normal 1 through 6 dice, nothing fancy about them. And of the 2 dice, the higher value determines how far I can move. So, show me a, show me a 4, I think, because that's what I need. 1, 2, 3, 4, I need 4. A 4, a 5, or a 6. Gimme, gimme, gimme! Okay, a 4 and a 6. Cool. I take the highest value, which was a 6. I can move up to 6 spaces. So, no problem. 1, 2, 3, 4. And I have made it. Yay! Now, interestingly, you'll notice this little tunnel here. If I wanted to come up here and fight these uh, trolls, I could go 1, and then at the tunnel, I could use as a teleport, basically, 2, to make it up here, because I can come out the other side, 3, 4. And so, with a 6, I could make it pretty much almost anywhere on the board with this series of tunnels we've got all over the place. But I'm coming over here. That was my first of two actions. Now, my second of two actions is I'm going to attempt to decipher the ancient runes, which means I have to do a uh, craft test. As you can see, I get to roll four dice, and it says I have to get fives or sixes. So now, this is my last shot. Uh, on this turn, uh, I get to roll once, and if I get two fives or sixes, I will succeed. That's a bit of a long shot, but wish me luck. Here we go. Oh my gosh, look at that! A five and a six. Oh, I, you know, well done, Babragor Hammerfist. You have deciphered the ancient runes. And the reward, draw two equipment cards for each card, decide which player can keep it. So, we go on ahead and discard this, and we get two equipment cards. What do we get? We get a chunk of cheese and a dwarven song. And so now we can split these up. Even though Jen's far away, either of us can, you know, Jen could take both of these. Now, the chunk of cheese, you can discard it any time to do some healing. And so, whoever's going to be going and fighting is probably the person... And, you know, and Jen is a better fighter than me. Plus, she has fewer hit points than me. So I think she should get the chunk of cheese. All right. And let's see. Dwarven Song. You can discard Song to whenever you're trying to do a speed test, you can turn one die into a five. So you can guarantee move around quickly if you sing yourself a Dwarven Song. Eh, let's see. I'm actually inclined to give that one to Jen as well. How about that? Let's just give them both to Jen. All right. So, I, would, I didn't take anything, but we've completed the quest, and we now are almost done with gearing up. We just need one more. Okay, and that was it. My turn is over. I did two actions. I moved, and then I attempted an adventure. You know, I, I did a test, and I got kind of lucky. And now, it is Jen's turn. So, the first thing she does is, again, she moves the track forward. And so you can see, once again, bad guys are going to spawn up here at the, uh, the Dragon Flame. Let's see how many. Oh, that's not good. All right, no elves. Which are, and the elves are the toughest to beat. You can actually see they've got bigger cubes. They're the biggest cubes as opposed to, you know, if you, if you put them side by side. Oh, yes, the elves are big and scary, those purple elves. But anyway, no elves spawned. But what did we get? We got two trolls and two orcs. 
That is bad news. So they're all going to spawn here in the spot where we previously had two trolls. And now, when and now, whenever you get a big group of people in a single tile, they are going to spread out across the, and they're, they're, they're basically going to destroy this area and turn it into perished land, and then they're going to spread out and start trying to destroy more of the world. Now, normally when you play, you have to wait until you get five or more cubes on a space. I'm playing such that they will spread out. This is the expert variant I mentioned up front. They'll spread out if there's ever four or more cubes. And now that's actually really important because they can chain react. They can get multiple spreads over a uh, multiple turn, depending. And so every time, because I'm playing at the expert level, that there are four or more cubes in a zone, there, that zone is going to get trashed and they'll continue to spread. So how does the spreading work? Well, we come over here and we've got all these random perished land tiles all face down Let's just pick one at random we got this okay so this has some information mm, that's not good okay this is bad news for us okay so you'll notice the central element of this perished tile is this um this white arrow yeah let's let's just move all these out of the way so i can see the space you will notice leaving dragon flame the white arrow faces this way the black arrow the brown arrow because this is a wide arrow, I put it here like, oops, here, like this, so it's pointing in the correct direction. And now you will notice, what this means is that if there were any, um, what's it, the orcs in this area, they won't want to go this way, They'll want, two of them will go off this way. And as you recall, there were two orcs, so these two orcs are going to spread down here, directly south. If there were any elves, which there aren't, the rest of what we got is trolls, the elves would try to go off up in this direction, although they can't go off the map, so they would ignore this. If this were facing this way, you know, if, if this were a black central arrow, then um, orcs would want to go this way, elves would want to go this way, and everybody else goes south. But in this case, orcs come this way, elves can't go anywhere, and now everybody else goes down here. And now remember, as I said, I'm playing at the much tougher level, which is instead of having five guys in a zone, four guys in a zone will cause, will, will trigger a spread, uh, will trigger a perish land. And so, hey, there's four guys here, so they're going to spread some more. And so I drew one that's brown. And so I point the brown this way. There are no greens, so there's no greens that peel off south. And nobody can go off the board. So, wow, this is really bad. Another, so they're going to spread some more. You can see why this is really tough. I mean, you, they can spread really fast if it's four. So now we have a brown. And so this is interesting. The brown says face south. And finally, we catch a break because one of the orcs wants to go off this way. And then the other three orcs, or I'm sorry, not orcs, trolls will come this way and boom. So they have finally stopped. And the nice thing is they kind of did a, they did not move into this tunnel system. So the tunnel is still active. These tunnels can be destroyed and that's really bad news. We kind of got lucky that they didn't go south here. They went east, but then, um, you know, so they just traveled three spaces in one turn. Now, like I said, normally it would it takes five guys to move. So they wouldn't have spread so far so fast, but all roads lead over here. And so we've got a bit of a problem up there. Um, not only are these guys primed to start spreading again, because now in the future, if anybody spawns at Area 5, this is, a, this is a highway to hell. They're just going to zip right down here and you know fill up this space and start the spreading again. So we're in trouble because I've made the game much more difficult for myself. Anyway, but anyway, so at the beginning of Jen's turn, we spawned some more. That did this huge chain reaction. Although, again, I'm playing on hard, so the chain reaction normally wouldn't have been so bad. Although, in part, it was because that was a really bad roll. Two orcs and two trolls at once. Now, um, hey, we get to refill cards, so at least a new card comes out. And it is Spirits of the Ancestors, which unfortunately does not get us equipment. This one um, means that you know if we successfully do this, we don't move forward on the hero track, so we get some more time. Now, to do this, you have to complete two speed tests of four plus in a single turn. Okay. Which is actually good because Jen's got the Dwarven Song. Okay, that's actually really, that's handy. Okay. So, um, right. And so now it is Jen's turn. We uh, did the event. And now on my turn, bad guys aren't going to spread anymore. Instead, we're going to add some bad events to the adventure deck. And then bad guys are going to spread out of area one. But then in a few turns, bad guys are going to spread. So we now have a few turns to try to clear these guys out of here. Because if we don't, they're going to expand again. 
um, when we get up to this turn. So we have kind of a, um, an immediate goal uh, and then a more of a long-term goal that we have to focus on. And how are we going to do this? Well, it's Jen's turn. And we still need to get gear up done as fast as possible because we, I mean, we need to get through this deck. So, and because Jen has the Dwarven Song, I think she's going to attempt the Spirit of the Ancestors. Now, by the way, all these cards, like I said, these are my um, kind of print and play stickered up English translations. The flavor text, I assume these are quotes from the books. Uh, by Vrakas, De Geister, Sie kommen, und zu hören, und ins, um, uh, Werder Band zu, zu, zu reisen, zu reisen. Okay, whatever that means, I assume all the flavor text will be translated into English as well. But right now, I think Jen has her first of two actions. She is going to try and complete this to buy us some time and to hopefully get another qu uh, quest out that will let us get better equipment. Um, right, so. Although, oh, but if she does this, she'll lose her dwar she'll lose her dwarven song, and we need to have three. So I don't think she's going to try that. What is she going to do instead? Now we need to crush these trolls. If we kill, if we take out two trolls in one round, but Jen and Jen's a good fighter. She gets to roll three dice instead of two. So I think, even though, and, and plus, you know, Jen only has three hit points, but she does have some cheese, so she can heal herself. I think Jen is going to head up north and try to crush some trolls and get this completed, so we can open up another adventure. So Jen's first action is she is going to move. Let's see how far she gets to move. A five. Okay, that's pretty good. So she gets to move five, and she will go one into the tunnel. She'll come out over here, two. So she really only needed a two to get where she needed to go. And the rest of that movement... All right, so that's Jen's first action. Now her second action is she is going to fight. She gets to roll three dice. And to defeat greens, you need to roll fours. To defeat the... Uh, the blacks, you know, the, what do you call them? The, the trolls, you need to roll fives. The elves are the toughest. You need to roll sixes. So Jen needs to roll as many fives as possible. She could roll three fives. She would take out all of these guys. So let's just roll three fives. Problem solved. Or sixes. Five or better. So let's just um, triple six. All right, let's go for it. Ah, that is not good. That's a one and a three. So these are both whiffs. But she did get that. So that is one of these guys taken out. And her turn is over. She had two actions. She moved and then she fought. Now, unfortunately, she did not crush the trolls because in one of turns she had to take out two. If she had any more action, she could try again, but as it is. Now, the important thing is, though, if she had, say, rolled a one, a three, and a two, and she completely failed to kill any of these guys, then she would take a point of damage herself. So it's dangerous to fight these guys, but as it is, Jen did pretty well. Okay. And, but she'll still stay here, and next turn she'll have two rounds. I'm sure she'll be able to take out all these guys. Fingers crossed, anyway, and complete crush the trolls. But anyway, it's my next turn, so we move up. And two um, crisis cards, or whatever they're called, these are bad events. These now get added to our adventure deck. You know, and they just kind of get randomly put in somewhere and shuffled up. And you know what? I'm, I'm going to shuffle this up, but tell you what, um, and then it's going to be my turn again. And uh, maybe I'll try and finish the Spirit's Answer. Maybe I'll come up here and try to help Jen. Or maybe I'll start sending messages to the Dwarven Council. Because if I can get the Dwarven Council all the way up here, we can craft our own weapons so we can complete the gear up. That might be what I'm doing. But if you'd like to watch some more, basically, you can go on ahead and hit the little eye up in the top right corner of the screen so you can go to the extended playthrough. Or you can go to Final Thoughts and hear what Jen and I think. Your choice. In 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.